in lateral decubitus position and we're just going to mark you can see the setup we have the uh, scope trolley on the opposite side of the uh, elbow and we're just doing the markings the instruments come over the patient on a mayo trolley you can see the mayo trolley and we're just doing the markings for the portals so we just mark the olecran on medial and the lateral epicondyle uh, markings of the tricep ulnar nerve and if you can see Can you uh, see the markings well? Yeah, uh, dull visible. But uh, could you tell us the range? Show us the range of movement. I've lost. The we can you. Hello. Yeah. We can you. Yeah. The question was: What are the patient's symptoms here? Does it have a terminal restriction for pain and? Uh, I can hear you properly. One second. Okay, can you hear us now? Better, better. Uh, you give a brief detail of the five degrees terminal flexion, five degrees terminal ex extension at the most rest. He has uh, pain in the elbow, so maybe we are expecting a little bit of sinusoidal. Lateral epicondyle or lateral condyle, uh, little piece of bone. Okay. But, uh, I think the we do people do scopy in uh, prone supine. Yes. for the audience. So you can do scopy in supine, uh, but need a hand traction for that or hand holding for that in supine. Uh, Lateral is the most easiest position to do scopy on because a lot of work is done with your hands towards the patient's head. Um, posterior compartment. So, uh, the biggest com advantage is posterior compartment is oriented well. You're working from the top rather than working from the front in a supine position. Uh, yes, sir, can you show us the working and the viewing portal for the... Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to insufflate the joint. Simple needle. Green needle. So uh, we've so marked the soft spot. So what, we're going what to is do, a soft spot? Just uh, So soft spot the, is a triangle. It's a, it's a spot in a triangle between the lateral epicondyle, the olecranon and the radial head. So mark the centers of those and uh, you will get a soft spot. You can normally feel the soft spot and uh, you put a needle in it and it goes in it goes between the radial head and the capitellum and then you insufflate the joint with uh, saline and normally when you do that it goes easily without any pressure and the fluid comes back can you see that yeah which means it's in the joint uh, uh, one of the most important things to understand is that with insufflation of the joints you're creating a working space but it does not increase the distance between the anterior structures and neurovascular structures and the capsules. So you've got to be very careful from that perspective. Okay? Okay. Got it. That's it. So that is joint nicely insufflated. Uh, Can so I request the meant to, you know, just focus the position of the surgeons, the, the, the tower and how is the whole setup? Please. Won't go. You, okay. So Dr. Abhijit is standing on the... Yeah. 
So let me help you. Let me see if I can push the patient while you're doing it. Do you want me to hold it? So tower is on the okay. back. Let me hold the it. Back. And this side. The surgeons are standing in front of the the body of the face. Right? So, uh, this is the anterior uh, antromedial portal here. Can we have a close up view? We cannot see the. Uh, right. So. The so, make, the so, you always start anteromedial uh, after the insufflation of the joint. And then it's a skin cut dissection on. And then choker. So, don't you look for the alarm now? Uh, so we mark the ulnar nerve and it is al always uh, dorsal or uh, posterior to the medial epicondyle. So, and the portal is anti the medial epicondyle. So we normally uh, you don't suggest that, you know, we put your finger and palpate than relying on the surface marking? Uh, so s when you palpate and then you can mark, you will, when you put the portal, you will hit the lateral ridge, oh sorry, medial ridge. When you hit the medial ridge, you have to make sure you don't go dorsal to it, you go ventral to it. So what are the indications I can ask for where well, we have to explore the median uh, ulna nerve first before we go for this portal? So uh, normally, ulna nerve is never expo explored. It is marked. See, for every arthroscopy, things are just marked so that you know where they are. Uh, and then, obviously, there is an element of uh, a learning curve for this. Uh, but uh, you can start off by holding the ulna with your finger and then doing it. Once you do a few, you will know that it really doesn't need to be done because you can, you are ventral to the ulna rather than dorsal. So your viewing portal is always uh, proximal and medial, right? Yes. Yeah. So the first portal is proximal medial. Once you get into the joint, then you can use the needle to uh, direct you for other portals. So under vision. So the first portal always have will invariably be blind, right? So the scope looks big. What is the you know, What is the size? So of the, the scope? scope is a four millimeter scope. So you, so you can do it with four millimeter. You can do it with two point seven. It's a it's a surgical preference. Yeah. Mm. Any questions can from the audience can be directed to us. Just gravity assisted saline, or you use any pump for this elbow wrist? Just a normal saline on uh, uh, without without a pump. Okay. I mean, you can use the other things you can use is you can use a syringe uh, with some fluid in it, and you can use uh, your uh, other portal of the uh, cannula to allow uh, in uh, pressure if you want pressure. So, so most of the superficial portal. nerves you have to be careful of is on the lateral side. Uh, the medial side, the superficial nerve careful you have to be careful is the uh, medial cutaneous, the dorsal medial cutaneous nerve. Uh, sorry, the the ulnar nerve on the medial side. Uh, on the lateral side you have the radial nerve on the anterior and the cutaneous nerve on the posterior so your portals the closer they are to the uh, humerus and more proximal you're safe the moment you start going distal which means going towards the forearm 
that is when you start feeling the pressure of the nerve. Somebody wants to start scopy, what are the cases you recommend that we start off with? Uh, starting scopy, uh, that's, that's it. So, you have to spend time observing it. Uh, I, I think elbow is the wrong joint to start scopy without understanding it. Because it's a very difficult scope. And you can sometimes see us struggle. And as always in life surgery, you struggle. Uh, mm, not, let me, let me try. Yeah, yeah. I think if you want to do a first scope, you do with the lateral epicondylitis or yeah. this body. Right. Give me the 2.7 scope, please. Yeah, yeah. To, huh. So it's so elboscopy. You, you know, you have to you have to see a few. You have to help a few. Then you can think of doing. Yeah, of course. Uh, Cadaver workshops, what do you recommend them? You think they're good enough to train yourself the cadaver workshops? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if they're good enough, to be very honest. Because cadaver is, uh, you still don't get the real. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Sister, can I have a scope, please? Not very good. Okay, yeah, we'll make it work. So we're shifting to 2.7. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's okay. That's okay. We'll connect in flow. It should just come quick. So in elboscopy, they say that you know viewing portal. Once you insert and come out, going uh, back is always uh, a challenge. Uh, yes. So do you agree with that? And uh, anything to uh, avoid? Uh, is the sheet? What am I? Saying? Is the sheet longer than the scope? By any chance? Because I can only see sheet. Sister, what scope is this? Uh, the 1.4 and 3 mm. So, they right, so, have, so yeah. I think they've given me a 2.7 sheet. Yeah. But I think it is a 2.4 scope. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what. So, you can just... Because uh, the length of the scope does not match the sheet. Yeah. Please uh, give 2.7 scope. And there is one Arthrex 3 mm scope, if you want okay. to try that. So, Ganesh, please help them. Easy, easy. That's okay. So your Carl stores, what is that scope of? Uh, Carl stores, we have 1.9, 2.4, 2.7. Is the length, length is same? Arthrex is 3 mm. No, bigger. Okay, let's put this one on. So, so I mean, I, I generally do scopes with uh, 2.7. Or maybe a 2.9. Scopes probably supplied by Conmed, uh, and the reason uh, is that it has a wider angle, so you can uh, see a lot of things. So white balance, just white balance. White balance. I think it's white, right? Ah, thank you. Okay, all right, let's start the fluid. Fluid's on. Okay, so we're in the joint. You can see sinovitis as expected. You can see that. Just uh, give us a brief round around into the joint. What would be the first time to look around and how do you So you have there? to find the uh, capitalum, uh, know where you are. I don't know how much deep I am in. 
Okay. Okay, so you can see, you can start seeing bone now, which means I am good. Yeah, so now you can see the radial head and the capitulum. You see that? Perfect. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, and you can see the amount of synovitis he has. So now we are good to make a lateral portal. So lateral portals, you can make two or three, depending upon how you want to work. So Gautam, uh, you did that anterior medial portal, right? Yes. So uh, just you found the soft spot and then you uh, put a needle. When you are taking the trocar, like because a lot of neurovascular structures lie anteriorly, so what is the tips that you? So stay close to the bone. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Because you stay close to the bone, you're okay. But however, the problem with staying close to the bone is that you. Where am I? Needle is in. Yeah, can I have a spinal needle, please? Because you also want a working space. Yeah. Okay, so this, I am probably a little anterior and a little inferior. I want to be a little higher than that. Uh, so I want, uh, it's not bad. So you see that uh, fold of the synovium? Yes, we can see that. Yes. So there's no cartilage there. You can see? Yeah. It's bare. Yeah. It's bare. So I can be a little more up and a little more in. Yeah, there. Silam, you can ask them to record it and take some pictures. Because that will allow me to get there. And if I come back a little bit, then, see that? Yeah. That yeah. is there. That is where I want to be. See that? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That is where I want to be. Uh, let's take it off. So, if you go proximal, then you're okay because the radial nerve is away on the lateral side at this point. As you go distal, the radial nerve comes in. Uh, no, give me a... Uh. So your plan for this case is just an osteophyte removal? Are you planning capsule? So we'll do... We'll do so he does not have much of restrictions. Okay. He's got only terminal range and I don't think I can improve that. The reason being, uh, he's got uh, an elbow that is uh, arthritic. So if the elbow is arthritic, I can't do much with it. <coughs> so I've come a little anterior. Where have I come? There. there. That's okay. I'll, I'll work with that. So the more anterior you are, the better it is because your working is easy. The more closer to the arm you are in the portal. Uh, uh, so now I need a smaller shiver because I've got a seven or you give me a bigger trocar. Uh, Gautam, I yeah. think so. We have four mm shaver. Uh. Yeah, you have a four mm shaver. You don't have a because I've got a 2.9 scope. So yeah. you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we had a 2.4 shaver, but yesterday it got some struck, I think so. so I had some technical... That, is a, that yeah. is a loose body. Yes, uh, I'll have to increase the portal. So you can... So I've just, I'm just changing it to a Wisinger rod. A 4 mm shaver. Uh, you can get uh, some smooth cannulas as well, but smooth cannulas sometimes are not available. You have to scout for them. I could change her. So you take this off. Turn it to face me. Yeah. Not, not in. 
Uh, it goes the other way as well. So Smith and nephew. Nay, nice. so Smith and nephew. So Smith and nephew is uh, very very tricky. So what they have done is for a, a small shaver, a small joint shaver, you need to have a different handpiece. You can't use the same handpiece. Okay, it's not, can you make it foot? Foot control. No, no. It's only hand. It's only hand? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No problems. Make sure I don't press it. In, hold this there. Give the elbow like that. Okay? Yeah, good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of shaving. Because if you stay close to the capsule, okay, so that's the loose body. Clearly visible for us. Yeah, so I will just take the base of the loose body away. Uh, can we have the suction off? Take this off. Take the suction off. Okay. So uh, this is a ah, easy. So this is a very useful tip. You can take the suction off, and then you will see the joint will not collapse. Because all you want is taking the bottom of the loose body off. The location of this loose body is in yeah. front of radial head? No, is it is in front of the coronoid. Okay. You see this? That is coronoid. Yes. Yeah. Is yeah? that a loose body? As yeah, that's a loose body. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, that is the osteophyte of osteophyte. the coronoid. Okay. Hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this. So because there is so much synovitis, you can see the fronds. If you want, you can use RF also. We have that RF. Uh, so I tend to avoid using RF in the elbow if you can. Okay. No, we like to use RF in shoulder and knee just to <laughs> take out all those loose strands. Yeah. Wrist and. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not used to hand control, so bear with me. I'm used to foot control. You are doing good, great job. Thanks Abhijit and uh, Gautam. So the problem is I am so used to uh, working with the foot so I can concentrate on movement of the uh, shaver. Uh, that is something that I would advise people because which, which according to you is the most difficult area to access with uh, scope? The posterior because you are going close to the triceps and the nerve. Now, so, so you can see it, I can pretty much eat this up, it's a soft body, so if I don't have a grasper at times, you can pretty much eat this up, but we'll remove it, uh, so how much is left? We still have stuff here. You can use a biter? Like yes. You can use a, something. Yeah. So the other thing with elbow is because we are not using cannulas, yeah. you have to avoid too many ins and outs. Very valid tip. Uh, 
Okay, so you can see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good sign, which means it is more or less getting loose. But I can, I think, I might, I might just eat this up. It will take me a little while. It's a soft bone. If not, then I will grab it because my portal is small. Reassess. So only this much is left now. I mean, especially the wrist, we are worried about the cartilage, which are all so closely packed, and uh, the intrinsic ligaments also. Elbow, yes, to a certain extent, but then uh, again, I mean, I, I'm not sure, I didn't, I was not there in the beginning. Is isolated dull or is just gone with that? So, yeah. anterior okay. portal, yeah. Okay. So, it's taken, a, it's taken a little while, but we've managed to eat it up, most of it. And you will find these bodies are reasonably soft. The hand surgeons are generally small people, so we work in small spaces. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't generalize us, please. <laughs> no, you were just talking about the radio frequency and why not. So I was just telling. No, no. So yeah. small joints avoid radio frequency. Yeah, that's the only reason. I thought. Unless you have a very good inflow and then you know you are constantly irrigating and then maybe yes. I mean very rarely we use it for scapulonic tightening and… No, you can use. So, this, yeah. for, for wrist, I think again there is a small radio frequency probe. The wind is there. So yes. It's malleable, the probe. So, you can just go exactly where you want. It's not a rigid probe. So, then you can yes, use So, that. I can take that off. Uh, give me a grasper please. So, more or less, I've taken most of it out. On the top, I will, I, uh, there. Uh, it's, is, is it a, a big one, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me take, yeah. okay, let me go for that one. Hold this. Uh, bring that into vision. So this is the one we looked at on the scan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. So again, they can see you can see it's attached. I go. I went. Okay all the way up so it opens fully okay hold this mm -hmm. so no 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 uh, so don't okay. pull the elbow because it makes my life really, really difficult. If anybody is attending cadaveric wrist scopy courses, one of the first exercises we do is we tie up a capsicum and then we ask you to scope and pick up the seeds. I mean, that's the first exercise which is done in a wrist scopy cadaveric course. 
and it's so beautiful inside a capsicum and it's like all the loose bodies so your triangulation your dexterity comes with that so we start off I would say take on this uh, new nanoscope technology by Arthrex, a smaller scope, any use of in the rest? I mean, if you have a lot of money, yes. <laughs> if you're in the US and you have a lot of money, then right. yes. Uh, scopes come out. But okay. yeah, have it has its own please. kind of uh, this one, but most of them can be done with what we use with the 2.3 scope. It's supposed to be disposable. There you go. Which would never dispose <laughs> as an Indian. <laughs> Shokar again, please. So if you remove the body, I'll show you. So it often happens that the scope comes out when you pull the body a little hard. And then it's a task. Okay, so we're back in. Uh, camera is turned around. Okay, so we'll show you a little bit now. So we've removed the body, see? It's off. So that is the coronoid. Uh, give me a second, I'll show you the coronoid. Do you think even the tip of the coronoid will improve the flexion? Uh, do you plan to do that? Okay, so we'll just do that for me. Okay. You can see the coronoid? Yes, yes, we can see that. Yeah, and so when you flex, you can see how it's, so you can see the osteophyte. So that is the osteophyte. The entire red thing is the osteophyte. That is your radial head. It has uh, some degree of cartilage and loss of cartilage. Uh, that's the capitalum. So if you hold it here, if I look up, you can see the center of the radial head. See that? Yeah, yeah. And you can see the inferior surface of the capitalum. It's already frayed. Now, with the 2.9 scope, you can potentially try and go in. See that? But not advised if you. Uh, no, no. So hold this. Hold the. Uh, that is why I need a cutter. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So see that? So that is where you get osteochondritis. Trochlea now. That is a trochlea. Okay, and then this is your. Uh, you see the muscle there. That is your tennis elbow coming across on the have a hook. Okay, so that is your trochlea starting there. That is the capitalum. So I would probably want to take this off if you want to give, if you had restriction of movement. So that is like doing an arthroscopic okay. Okay, you can see the trochlea and then you can shift the scope onto the other side and look on this side, uh, but, so he's got flexion, is f and then the flexion is not a problem, so it's really, if the audience want, we can take this, otherwise do less damage, I have to remove that bit, and let me see how big that is. Do you use osteoderms to remove the such osteophytes? Uh, osteotome is very difficult to get in there. And you can get hand osteotomes in. Uh, 
but you can use the uh, shoulder periosteal elevators and they will help we have liberator ah. yeah. yeah we have that yeah we have i saw that so a lot of dissection can be done through the probe so that is your capsule so now once i've opened this now my elbow will start swelling so i have to be quick now so you you want to do posterior yes so i'll give let me just uh, give me a grasper please uh, no give me a punch i'll just punch it out and then uh, shave it off because i have taken it piecemeal it becomes very difficult for me to now uh, take it out with a grasper So something is wrong. Hold on. So don't touch the elbow. Let it drop. So if you move the elbow, it moves. My position moves. Hmm. Okay. So I've just got that little piece left, and I'll shave it off. Shaver, please. So that is my. You can see the anterior capsule is breached. So now there's just no point in doing too much here. Uh, have suction, please, on the. That's it, not two. Yeah, stop. Suction off. Okay. So there is nothing now. It's removed. Now, if you want, I can do a little bit of burring, and then that's it for the anterior side. I can take that coronoid piece. Just show the anatomy of the ECRB. Mm -hmm. which, can show the ECRB anatomy? attachment. Okay, you have the hook, please. So it's where my hook comes in. Okay, so he has. You see that red bit? That's the. If you look at the scan, just hold the hand, hand there. Uh, no, no. Relax, relax, relax. Let me go in. Sir, can you just demonstrate the audience where uh, you do a tennis elbow release arthroscopy? Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what, what I'm what, saying. Uh, okay, hold this. Okay. So you see that piece of bone there? Yeah, if you look at their scans, they have a little fracture there and this is this muscle, the front of it, you see this white bit? Sorry, I am making you seasick. See that white bit? Where so my tip of the probe is? Yes, we can see that. So, to shave that off, this, right, to see the exact proper belly of the. This is ECRB. Part of the internal attachment of ECRB. So, that is so my portal is a little anterior because that was not the idea. So if I have to do ECRB, you have to come on it and then keep eating it and go back. So you have to come from here and then go out. Okay? Yeah, Gautam. Yes. Another 10 minutes, <clears throat> then we'll go for uh, the talks. So okay. what, is, what is your plan? Now you want to go posterior? Yeah, so I want to go posterior. I'm just thinking, should I burr this off? Yeah, we, we have burr also, Silam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, burr. Let me just burr this off. So I burr this patient off. has a good range of motion. Uh, sir, huh. for ECRB release, uh, how much uh, do you take it and how much you know when to stop? That is from. So, so you have to. So, ECRB, if you go too much, you will go to ECRL because they have superficial fibers. So, once you see muscle fibers and you've taken the 
tendon bit off, then you are good, then you stop. Uh, is it an ideal uh, indication for a learner to start an arthroscopy? Maybe uh, if you start a, uh, by tennis elbow release, you can, even if you are not successful in the initial time, you can just put an incision in the outer side and uh, get off with it. Absolutely. The only problem is your lateral. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so what is Burr set at? Can you put a little bit of suction on this? goes off fully. The suction is too strong. Silam, just keep midway, Silam, rather than complete. No, no, yeah, but it does, the inherent pressure of the suction is too strong. Okay, doesn't matter. Don't worry, I'll sort this. So I have to determine how far I can go. So I'm starting lower first. I don't want to go beyond this. My elbow is in 90 degrees of flexion. Is it, is it the same acromyzer bar used for the shoulder? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you, you, so you get smaller burrs. You get a 2.9 burr. Hold this. Do you prefer the smaller burr? I do. I do. But then with Smith and Nephew, the problem is you need to have a smaller hand, uh, hand piece. You have a ball tip? Uh, give me a ball tip if you can. So this is how much is left. Yeah, okay. yeah, but just bend the. That's it. Thank you. So you get ball tip burrs as well. Okay. However, the problem is taking it out, putting it in. No? Give me a second. So, so the burr is making a noise, which means I'm coming to good bone. Okay, so can we reassess? So now if you want, we can do a... Because I've taken the osteophyte off. I have left the tip still because the tip looks articular now. But I can take a little bit of this off. Uh, let me see if I can do the burr. And then I can give... Do we have cannulas for elbow like shoulder and Yeah, yeah, you have cannulas, you have smooth cannulas. Okay. So don't use the cannulas that have got threads on. Okay. Uh, towards you. That's it. That's it. David, drop it. Mm. Hold this. Right. Do that for me.
A beautiful Gautam. I think so. Uh, we have another five minutes. Then we uh, we go with the so, talks. But so you people, we will be watching you. Uh, so you can just tell us like what what next you are going to do. So I am. We are going. I think this is done more or less. Yeah. So what we need to do now is uh, just take this. So you can see it's. I've come to the cartilage level. Yeah. So I just need a, a periosteal elevator. Oh, give me that shoulder periosteal elevator. Liberator. No, the other one. And I'll just break this. And drop. Drop. Uh, is it possible to show the posterior portal yeah, okay. for the audience if you can? The difficult part. Okay. So that yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, give me the other one. Okay. And you can also do a capsular release <laughs> with these. So this is what I'm interested in taking off. But even if I left this, it will not cause a lot of problem because it is only cartilage. It will eventually just dissolve because it does not have a bony support. Sir, how do you do the capsular release usually with the periosteal elevator or yeah. shaver? So I do both. You never use the RF for it, right? I try not to use RF in the elbow because uh, the amount of, uh, there is a risk of chondrolysis. Okay, so I've yeah. taken off the tip of the coronoid. Right, give me a shaver. Ah, Grasper or shaver, whichever. And then that is it. So we are done in the anterior part. Yeah. Okay, so you want to do a capsular release, you have to go up. You have to have uh, another portal uh, to go up and then do the capsular release from there. Uh, straighten the elbow. But I think so doing a stiff elbow is more challenging. It yeah, is, yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. it is. The less the space, the more the problem. Yes, so the tennis elbow release will be ideal. And even if you want to open it in the lateral side, you can get away by telling that it is a keyhole. So don't, big incision won't be needed. True. Suction, I would need. So, yeah, just, just hold it there. Yeah, suction. The capsule keeps covering on me, and I think I am wasting some valuable time here. Right, go on. Suction. So, any tips when if there is a uh, bleeding and there is some bloody field what 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 tips you have say again if there is a bloody bloody field so uh, then i think you cannot do arthroscopy with a bloody field uh, give me yeah. a grasper please okay. so i think you should you should you should know when to stop yeah stop go open do as little harm as you can we see we have got nothing to prove to anybody true true So you are going to take separate portals for posterior? Yes. So I'll give this Abhijit. You want to? I think so. Posterior portals will be little challenging. We just want to know. Okay. So I think I have a little bit of. Hold this for me. I think I have got that little piece of bone left. Okay, so I think I am done here, pretty much. Right. Knife, please. So you can see the elbow is already swollen. Yeah. So we're going to go posterior. There are two ways. You can go a mid or a trans triceps, or you can go medial lateral. 
the problem with medial lateral is ulnar nerve. That is when you have to really uh, hold the ulnar nerve in your thumb and then go posterior. So there is merit in doing posterior first. What is your post-op protocol when you see a swollen elbow like this? Any special precautions you need to take? So the post-op protocol would be uh, 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 soft roll and a crepe and uh, full mobilization, no restrictions. Because we have not done anything in terms of repair. That's it. So this is, uh, can you see what Abhijit is doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very important to do this. Because this will make sure that all the adhesions on the tip of the olecranon and all your uh, scar tissue is gone. And it always looks a little odd, the olecranon. Okay, that's it. So in post-traumatic stiff elbow, this step is very important. Yeah, so post-traumatic stiff elbow, uh, things you can or you uh, would want to do. See, he's on the, can you see? Yeah. yeah. So things you want to assess is what all compartments you want to visit and how much work you want to do on each compartment. Uh, because no matter how much you do arthroscopic, it's always less. Because it looks very big uh, or it, you, you feel like you've done a lot. When you get an x-ray of these guys, uh, you have done just about bare minimum. Needle please. So we're in the posterior portal now. And then All right, that's it. Okay, can you see the needle coming in? So this is posteromedial. Yeah, so the scope is trans triceps. Okay. And then you have a posterolateral. You don't want to go posteromedial because you have the nerve there, right? And the elbow swollen. So you really don't know where the nerve is right now. That's it. Shaver, please. Yes. So now that I have spent a lot of time anterior, I've made Abhijit's life difficult. <laughs> <laughs> See, one place where you can actually try and use the wand is the posterior. Uh, but then, what do you want me to do? Uh, you want me to extend, flex? Okay. Can just tell the audience what all you can process you can do in the posterior elbow. One is the osteophyte so, loose body removal. Then, so that is so when you ask what should the beginners do, you know, so I mean we've been doing elbow elbow arthroscopy for a reasonable amount of time, and you can still see a struggle. Uh, that gives you an idea of how difficult the joint is. 